speech that I'm doing because I am fascinated by, by coming out of the pandemic and the values that are really important to us. Uh, my main concern as a kind of cyber behaviorist watching our digital first world that we live in now is that we are lacking perhaps human connection. And as we emerge into the next decade, the next 10 years, we, we know digital will simply keep accelerating. And the question I think, I think I have philosophically is what does that mean for human connection? How do we build human empathy into our digital connections? That's really what I'm here to talk about. And so that really sets up a conversation about relationship. What is the essence of relationship? From a relationship point of view, we talk about customer relationship all the time. We talk about you know, the transaction versus the relationship. And in the 1980s, we launched relationship marketing as a concept. This is like 30, 40 years ago, where we talked about, well, let's move away from transactions and let's try and build relationships with our customers. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? To have a relationship with a customer, a, a lifelong relationship, customer loyalty, brand loyalty. These are all things that came out of this conversation. And let's move away from transactions. The problem with digital is mostly it's transactional. Digital is one click, one swipe, each thing is a transaction, and we're not really building the kind of relationships that we do in the physical world on the digital platforms, and that can be a problem. So we talk about customer lifetime value, we throw that word around a lot in organizations, but do we actually do anything to build the foundations of customer lifetime value? Do you remember back in your teenage years, or maybe even more recently for some of us, having unrequited love? Loving somebody but not being loved back. Do you remember the pain of that? You know, remember back to being a 14-year-old girl or boy and you had a crush on somebody and they didn't love you back. You know, that was, it was awkward. It was like a 404 error, love not found. Now, you know, and it, was, it wasn't fun. Now, that's what we do to customers every day. I think. And we're going to go through each of the things that makes a relationship work in the real world between humans and we're going to see, can we apply that then to the digital platform and to the world that we live in from a business point of view to maximize our customer experience. So let's start with the first one, love and commitment. How can we expect a customer to come back to us again and again, no matter what we're selling, whether we're a private enterprise, whether we're government, it doesn't really matter. We're all a customer of something. How do we expect them to come back to us again and again unless we show them love and commitment? And what is that? Well, in a relationship, it's what we call maximum effort. If you want to make this jump, you can't kind of half attempt this jump. You have to actually fully commit to it before you're about to do it, or else you can see it's going to fail. The same thing is in relationships, and most relationships fracture and, and, and falter because we don't give maximum effort. There comes a time after a year or two or five where we stop trying, we stop working at it, and it falters. And so ask yourself along the customer journey, whatever customer journey that you've plotted for your brand, are you giving maximum effort at every time? Hmm, probably not. You're probably coasting in a few places. Um, and then also, you know, commitment is about planning a future together. That's what, that's what it means when you slip a ring on someone's finger. It's not just let's get married. It's about let's plan a future together. And if you are serious about building a customer relationship, you should be thinking the same thing, shouldn't you? Shouldn't you be going towards a customer interaction saying, well, how can we not only sell this product or service this time, or this year, or this month, or this subscription, how do we actually plan a future with this customer? And if you say those words in a strategy meeting, that, that sends you off in a very different direction in terms of actually embedding that customer in the business. And, and we, we do kind of very blunt things like that. We do customer satisfaction tracking. We do NPS tracking. And all we're doing is we're tracking satisfaction and we're pretending that that's some kind of a relationship, but it's not. They're just saying, well, your product met my expectation, but that's not building a relationship. And even the words we use, customer acquisition, customer retention, it's like, it would be like if I put up a Tinder profile for dating and brought them home and put them in my dungeon in the basement. <laughs> That's what customer retention is like, you know? I'd like to bring you home and lock you in a cage. Um, you know, it's not really, not really a great dating kind of vibe. So we, we don't want to retain our customers in some kind of aggressive way or acquire them like in kind of, no, we want it to be natural. We want them to want to be with us. Uh, and let me give you an example of that kind of love and commitment. Trader Joe's is a grocery store in the States. They don't do delivery, they don't do home delivery, they didn't even change that during the pandemic. Um, but in Pennsylvania, uh, her father was stuck in his apartment in the snow. He couldn't get any food, and his daughter was ringing around the area. She didn't live near him and trying to get him some food. Restaurants wouldn't deliver in the snow. Grocery stores wouldn't deliver. And she called Trader Joe's, and they said, look, we don't deliver, but they heard the story, and they felt sorry for the guy, and they did deliver to him. It was Christmas time. They didn't even take any money for the food. And this isn't a moment where a brand gets to choose love and commitment. It gets to choose, actually, look, this guy's in our neighborhood. He needs our help, and as a brand, we can do something here. 
Uh, and so I think every brand needs to look for moments of, of commitment to your customer beyond the corporate sphere. And that's the problem. I think coming out of the pandemic, we are very aware that the corporate world that we lived in, which is just about profit and commercial interest, will not sustain us for the next decade or two. And so we need to find the human empathy piece in that love and commitment piece. So that's number one. So what have you done? What have you shown your customers? How have you shown your customers that you love them, that you're committed to them? Because if you haven't done any of those things, how do they know? And the same question will be true of your personal relationship. Unless you've actually shown the love and commitment to your, to your partner or to the person that's important to you, how do they know? They're just left guessing, which is never really a great space. And conflict resolution and fair fighting, again, is a healthy relationship form. It is unhealthy never to have conflict, because that's a bit weird. Um, but so conflict will happen. How you deal with that conflict is what forms good, healthy relationships. This is a wonderful sculpture from Burning Man 2015 called Love by a Ukrainian artist. We can all identify with that, can't we? There's moments where you are, have your back turned to your partner because of what's happened, but inside there has to be that connection all the time, that inner child connection. And so we need to, even in bad times, when we do drop our customer, when the trust is gone, how can we get that back? And look, we will do it. This, this wonderful tweet to Tesco, you know, is this dog shampoo supposed to turn my dog pink? Like, probably not. And that's bad, but what happens when Lush Cosmetics does the same thing to a human? And you're like, okay. We, so we, we are going to make mistakes in branding, our products, our services, yet sometimes we're going to kind of drop the ball. The question is, how do we deal with it? How do we say sorry? How do we genuinely apologize with authenticity and honesty as opposed to just saying it for the sake of saying it? How can we be real in our apologies? How about this one? <laughs> Come in and try the worst coffee one woman ever had on TripAdvisor. So I love this idea that even in a negative post, you can actually turn it into a positive. And I know what happened here. I know that at least half the traffic passing that coffee shop on the day saw that, either laughed and had a connection with the brand, or else somewhere in them, the curiosity thought, I wonder is it as bad as she said? <laughs> and in you go. And so you can, you can use even negative reviews to kind of build connections. And again, I think the important thing to remember is when I talk about conflict, most of you do think about when things go very wrong. But actually, the majority of conflict in a customer journey is engineered by us as brands by having complicated processes that put in place that we think are good. So this is a good example of process. And we do this to customers every day, particularly digitally also. Have a look. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. We're only boarding rows nine and above right now. You'll have to wait. Well, I'm in row eight. Please step aside, sir. It's just one row, don't you think it's okay if I... We'll call your row momentarily. Step aside, sir. Thank you for waiting. We'd like to continue boarding the aircraft now. We're now boarding all rows, please. All remaining rows. Oh, hello. Enjoy your flight. <laughs> that face he makes, that face is the face that we've all made at some point in a customer interaction, where you're thinking, really? Really? This is what's happening, is it? And so those moments, then, because you remember, in digital, we don't necessarily always get to see the face of our customer. So we need to make sure that everything that we're doing is humanly empathetic, that the process isn't overly complicated, that it is engineered putting the customer at the middle. So do we have our, our customer's best interest and the relationship's best interest at the heart of process engineering? and particularly in moments of conflict. And in moments of conflict, instead of thinking about, and this is true of your personal relationships too, instead of thinking about winning, which most of us do, in a personal conflict moment, most of us go straight to, I want to win this fight. If you change that focus to, I want the relationship to be stronger after this fight, you completely change how you relate to your partner. And it's also true in business. If you, if you have a moment of conflict that comes up with a customer, Treat it as a gift. Treat it as this is an opportunity to build this relationship in a stronger way. So then how your customer contact member deals with that conflict changes fundamentally. <laughs>